30th, 2010. My video is all about recovery from uh, addiction to substance or behaviour, or substance and behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, could have been anything else. Didn't get round to hard drugs, unless they were prescription ones, and sometimes I need those, those now, as a doctor tells me. And uh, yeah, alcohol, the substance, behaviour, well, work, relationships, anything, people, places, things, collecting, wanting to be perfect, never so, striving to, f to make sure you didn't find me out, striving to feel okay, striving and striving. But that's okay, striving's okay as long as it's in proportion and in balance to a day. So as long as we don't set ourselves impossible tasks, then we've probably got a chance at keeping our sobriety. <clears throat> so one day at a time, sobriety seems to work for me. And it took a long time, first of all, to find the conviviality had gone away from my substance taking. But taking a drink to take the edge off became taking a drink because I needed one. I became dependent to fix myself. And as I, f I fixed, I became even more dependent. And that turned into addiction. It's a natural progression, I feel, for most people. So whatever the substance is, or whatever the behaviour is, we can find ourselves addicted, trying to fix ourselves on a daily basis, or hourly, depending on where it's got to. And for me it was 24-7 drinking. And it didn't work in the end. Alcohol stopped working. And everything else stopped working. And it was a very, very low rock bottom for me. And it wasn't the hospital visits, it wasn't the intensive care, it wasn't anything in particular which gave me a moment of clarity except one thing. I kept waking up and I woke up one morning and thought it cannot get any worse so what can I do? And I'd run out of my own ideas and I thought well I need help and that was the moment of clarity. The spiritual connection to other people. I needed help from other people who had a clue how to get sober. So professionals were part of my story Rehab was part of my story, although it didn't work quite as it might. It still helped in a very strange way, probably delayed the inevitable sobriety. But I am I'm sober one day at a time. And there is one other element which is of primary importance, and that's the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. And I share about AA here because it's part of my story. I don't speak for it, never can, never will full of unique authentic people with one similarity a desire to stop drinking and then share a message of experience, strength and hope and that's what these videos are about if you can't get to a meeting or you want more information <coughs> this is just me and there are plenty of other websites and people out there lots of people out there sharing experience, strength and hope of how to get sober so I'm just one message of many <coughs> and that's good because I don't want to be a guru or somebody who can be said to be, he's an authority. I'm not, I'm just an authority on my sobriety, just for today. And then I have to learn it all again. But there are some tools in the toolkit of the AA Fellowship which keep me going along smoothly, or not smoothly, as life experience offers. So what is AA? On this little card is the AA preamble. And inside it, it has the uh, the backbone, if you like, the 12 steps of AA and 12 traditions of AA. And in the literature I share here, this book, Daily Reflections, it covers one of the 12 steps each month. And March is step three, all about letting go and letting good things happen, or letting God help us. And for me, God is very simple as, a, as an understanding, truth, love, and works through people and that's very understandable for me so it's the universal truth of now not just my version or my I suppose interpretation of truth so truth universal love and works through people that's where I get my wisdom experience not only from myself but other people so AA the AA preamble what's it all about here we go Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship for men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. 
AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. Or people with just a desire not to drink. And uh, it's been a busy morning so far. Up early, checking my medical information, which I keep because it's not only uh, recovery from alcoholism which I need to be concerned with I have type 1 diabetes and clinical depression as well and it was necessary to go for a, a review with my general practitioner or MD medical doctor to fill in some forms and do some administration regarding people knowing what's going on for me uh, I'm self fully self-supporting but at the same time I still need to share information with the relevant government agencies who may offer help if there is any help to be offered like <laughs> help getting around from time to time which is becoming a, a real issue with type 1 diabetes and what's happening with it so the gift of being in sober is I'm able to engage in life as it is today and there is nothing more I suppose enlightening than having to go and do a re review of everything that is going on for me and how it impacts on daily life and do I like doing it? No, I don't like doing it because I'd rather cover it up and pretend everything's alright but what I know is the fellowship has taught me to be open, honest and willing to share the truth of now with those who need to know so for me it's, it is imperative that people know I am type 1 diabetic and I do suffer from clinical depression too. It explains when I look a bit peculiar because the symptoms of a low, hyper, a low sugar level hyperglycemia is going unconscious and looking drunk and of course in the year, how many years, it's a few years now I haven't had a drink so if people think oh he's drunk and he's lying, in, lying down because he's feeling a bit tired it's not true. I'm actually having a hypo, which is extraordinarily dangerous if not treated. So I need to be careful, and uh, I usually wear a chain which says, Help me, I'm a diabetic, if you see me unconscious. <coughs> but, uh, you know, sharing this all the time with uh, medical people, it gets repetitive, and uh, even now I find it difficult. But that's just me. Oh, what it is to be human. Anyway, daily reflections for today. All about letting go and letting good things happen. Let go and let God. It says here for March 30th, our group conscience. And this is really to do with unity, service and recovery. But it's about our personal conduct too. Sometimes the good is the enemy of the best. I think these, th these words apply to every area of AA's three legacies. Recovery, unity and service. Recovery, unity and service is something we all do. We give it away to keep it. I want them etched on in my mind and life as I trudge the road of happy destiny. These words often spoken by co-founder Bill W were appropriately said to him as the result of the group's conscience, that is the group that we might belong to, makes a decision based on everybody's input. God works through people, not one person. It brought home to Bill W. the essence of the second tradition. Our leaders are but trusted servants. They do not govern. Just as Bill W. was originally urged to remember, I think that in our group discuss discussions, we should never settle for the good, but always strive to attain the best. These common strivings are yet another example of a loving God working through people. As we understand him, expressing himself through the group conscience, Experiences such as these help me to stay on the proper path of recovery. I learn to combine initiative with humility, responsibility with thankfulness, and thus relish the joys of living my 24-hour program. And the absolute gift is, sometimes we do get joy, but we do also get sadness, which is part of life. So what helps me is that serenity prayer to God or good conscience. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is just for today, always. <laughs>